This is the second step of writing our project on classroom voting application. We shall now set an HTTP listener to listen and respond to requests coming from a browser. For this, .NET Core provides a class called HTTP listener. Most of the basic plumbing is handled by this class. We need only four things to get it working. First, we have to add the listening routes to the prefixes collection. Wildcards are also supported. You'll come to know about it in a moment. After that, the listener is put into started mode and a while loop is set to handle the requests. We have to provide an async callback delegate to handle a request and write the response to the output stream. This tutorial explains all the steps in sufficient detail and let's see. We shall start by writing an utility class to obtain the IP address of the PC. It is required for displaying it on the console output so that mobile phones can be asked to type this address and connect to it. For this add a class called utility as you see here. This class has been marked static because we shall be adding standalone helper functions to this class. Add a static function called get machine IP address. Declare a string IP to store the IP address. Host name is obtained from the environment class. It is then used to obtain IP host entry. A for each loop is then used to obtain the internet address. This code might not make much sense to somebody not well conversant in network terminology. So the best way is to just copy paste it in your projects and uh, that's all I can say at the moment. And then we have printed a suitable message if the IP address could not be found and returned the IP address. And next let's add a class called server to handle the HTTP requests coming from a client. This class will handle the voting logic also. So start by typing the class. Add a concurrent dictionary to hold key value data. We are using a concurrent dictionary because an HTTP server is inherently a multi-threaded application. This dictionary holds the student ID in its key. Each student ID is unique and the value associated with the key is a tuple made of two properties. The first property stores the choice of the student like A, B, C, D or whatever. The second property stores whether the choice was altered by the student. This is a flag that will later be used to update the database only if the student revised his vote. You might have to review my C sharp course, course for tuples. So you can go through that if you find it difficult to understand. And after this we hold a reference to the project context. This is required for database communication. And then add a constructor. The constructor receives the project context as a parameter. It is cached for later use underscore ctx is equal to ctx. And next initialize the concurrent dictionary. A for each loop is now used to read the db context for all the records of votes currently stored in the database. This might be required if this voting continues in different sessions and each vote is marked with the flag is dirty equal to false. And after that we have added a function called handle request to match the delegate required for handling HTTP requests for the HTTP listener. Please note that HTTP listener will be added to the program.cs file and from there we'll make this connection. So first extract the HTTP listener, next obtain the HTTP listener dot context. The async wait handle will be automatically released when the function returns. The using keyword automatically scopes it to the end of the function scope. This is a new feature of C sharp 8 and later versions. Get the HTTP request from the context. And similarly get the HTTP response object from the context. And uh, since this is our just uh, getting started in this project, so we shall now be sending a hello message to the calling client. 
we'll improve it later on this is only for testing this step in later steps we shall make more sophisticated changes to this code so get the byte array using utf8 get bytes set the content length property write the byte array to the output stream this completes the server class for this tutorial we shall soon verify that the server sends this string when we send a request from the browser in the meantime let's come back to the solution explorer and open the program.cs file we shall listen for requests on this port number you can safely set any available port in the range 50000 in case it fails so create an instance of http listener clear the prefixes collection and then add a catch all route to handle all requests coming to the port 8090 we have used a star here for that purpose put the listener into started mode create an instance of the project context pass this reference to the server object and uh, next obtain the ip of the machine by using the utility class that we added just now display a message to the console now that we are listening on this ip address and on this port if uh, the browser is running on this computer then we can listen on localhost also and finally a while loop is used to set the listener loop notice that the begin get context receives the handle request delegate that we completed just now so all the requests will be handled there i suggest that you may please download the project from the attached downloads and examine all these files to join all the pieces together and now compile the project 